Today's Music Monday is the TR versus TR edition with Lovey Dovey. Okay, I have to start by saying that both Simon and I unanimously agree that this song is totally funky awesome! With its amazing disco awesomeness, this is so much better than Cry Cry. It's so funky and it's got this amazing- COWBELL! It has COWBELL! Do you know how much I love COWBELL? It is totally amazing. Every K-pop song with COWBELL is awesome. That is all. And that woo woo is so catchy. We've just been singing it all day long for every possible situation. I'm prepared to say that Tiara is my new favorite band. It used to be four minute, but I was really disappointed with their last two songs. And I would say Brown Eyed Girls, but they don't release music often enough. But Tiara are constantly pumping out awesome song after awesome song. Bo Peep, I go crazy because of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roly freaking poly. And now this, Tiara. I'm your new fanboy. What's your fan group called? The TR Tards? I'm not sure, but sign me up, because I've got a severe case of Tiararia. The quality of the filming of this music video is awesome, and the acting is much better than the acting we saw in, say, last week's video. We're also happy to see that Tiara's record label is putting so much effort into making these very long, but very original music videos. All in all, we are not disappointed with the song and music video, but, and there is a but, even though we love Tiara's music, we feel like this music video didn't match the song's feeling at all. And the awesomeness of the song just can't cover up all the silly plot holes that pop up in his music video. Oh my god! The very first time we watched this video, we found ourselves cracking up at inappropriate moments saying, Why would you do that? If we were to talk about every issue in this video, it would probably take us well over an hour. So we're just gonna jump to the main action sequence in the end and talk about the video as a whole in our blog post. So click on the link here if you want the full review. Okay, let's fast forward. Bounty Hunter Girl and her friends steal a bag from the same bad guy from the cry cry video that pwned them before. Bounty Hunter's friend gets captured by them and so she goes to rescue her. But not before she reveals to her old partner, who is now working as the swaggest food stand guy I've ever seen, her true secret identity. Then she tries to save her friend. Hey bad guys, here's your drugs, now give me my friend. Friend, you should go. Don't worry, I'll be okay. Um. Wait, why exactly did you not leave with your friend? You know, walk away slowly with the gun facing outwards, or, now this is crazy talk, I know, why don't you try busting some caps in some people's asses? But no, she actually stands there for so long that a guy sneaks up on her and smashes her with a piece of wood and she gets captured. Why she didn't shoot anybody is completely beyond us, and why nobody shot her is also beyond us as well. It seems like the only person in this area that owns a gun is her. Really? We think the scene should have gone this way. Here's your bag of drugs. Now, give me back my friend! <laughs> I don't think so. Seriously? Th that's all you have? Wooden sticks? All of you? <laughs> oh, I didn't think this through. In that case... Murder! Meanwhile, her old partner decides to call the phone number, and what he gets is a girl screaming into the phone for help! I'm really glad those bad guys were so thoughtful to let her keep her cell phone, and to ignore her while she screams into the phone down the hallway. She rushes over to the bad guy's nest. Now, why she didn't call the police is completely beyond us. Or even more, why she thinks that this street food guy could possibly do anything to save her and her friends. With what? His like mad dookbooky skills? The good guy then beats up the goonies with a pipe. The bad guys attack him with pipes. Okay, seriously, we need to take a break here. Do none of the bad guys own any guns or any other weapons apart from a stock of hardware store supplies? Yes, what can I do for you? I want a hundred guns! We are sold out! How about some knives? Also sold out! Harpoons! Oh, sold out! Angry birds! Sold out! Dogs! Oh, uh, no, this is sold out! Dogs that shoot bees from the mouths when they bark! Oh, mmm, sold out! Poison darts! Ah, sold out! Regular darts! Also sold out! Dart boards? Ah, uh, it's sold out! A horde of Dothraki man warriors! Let me think, ah, uh, sold out. Devil fruits. Hmm. Oh, we have this in, oh no, it's sold out. Well, what do you have then? Well, can I interest you in some super samayaki? Oh God, I'm not looking to torture, I'm looking to kill. Okay, well then, uh, how about this nice piece of wood? Oh. Oh, you can, you can swing oh. it. You can beat. Oh. Huh? Give it a. I yeah. will take all of the wood that you have! Okay. Anyhow, after he beats up the Lumberjacks and Plumbers Association of Korea, he sees his old partner tied up, and this is where we yelled at the screen. He 
throws down his pipe. Of course, the coast must be clear. If you can't see anybody, that clearly means that they're not hiding anywhere. Like, say, in that perfect black spot right there for bad guys. And why? A trained bounty hunter would think that she would be left there unattended is beyond me. But he walks into a trap and takes two caps to the chest. Then the saved girl comes back and hits the bad guy in the back with, you guessed it, some wood that she grabbed from the corpse of a dead lumberjack. So let's pause here to review two very blaring plot holes. She had facial reconstructive surgery so the bad guy doesn't know her real identity. And so he wouldn't know that anyone, let alone the good guy, would come to make an attempt to save her. So why tie her up and wait? You should just kill her and go. Nope. I'm gonna wait all night for someone to rescue her. Is anyone here yet? And also, the bounty hunter girl wasn't blindfolded, so she clearly knows that this is a trap set up for somebody. So when she sees him, why wouldn't she be like, Why is she? Stop! It's a trap! There's a guy waiting in here with the only gun in the whole room! Did the bad guy tie her up and say to her, Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wascally street food bounty hunter wabbits. Anyhow, the two men then wrestle with the gun vigorously, almost as if one of them hasn't just been shot twice in the chest with a gun. The bad guy then clearly forgets how to use the gun because he's clearly clearly pointing at the good guy's face, but he must be thinking that stabbing him with the gun is much more effective than shooting him with it. The good guy then, dying from blood loss, manages to overpower the bad guy and shoot him in some organ which is somehow more fatal than being shot twice in the lungs because the bad guy dies instantly. The bounty hunter girl then takes her dying partner into the car and instead of driving him to a hospital, decides to go on a very long tour of Korea. Because when they were fighting it was dark, but when they're driving it is broad daylight. How long was he there dying in the car with two bullets in the lungs? Where is her friend and why isn't she performing first aid on the dying guy in the car? I don't know. I just I just Yeah! I'm... I'm dying. For some sausage McMuffins. Oh, did you want hash browns? No, I'm trying to watch my weight. Okay, no combo, just the sausage. Actually, actually, wait! Get, get the hash browns. After all, I'm dying. Oh, I just see. Oh, make a combo. That was a great last meal. Because after all, I'm dying. I just see. Yeah. I just see. I just see. After all. Ah. <laughs> Shockingly, he doesn't make it through the seven hour joyride and dies in the car. But we think that they should have both died in a horrific car accident much earlier because she barely keeps her eyes on the road. As he stares at her before he dies, he starts to remember her as she was before her surgery. But unfortunately for those of us watching this, the makeup artist forgot to match the blood up on their face. As the blood jumps from side to side on her face, the girl, heartbroken at his death, decides to launch the car off a cliff and into the ocean. So she can die too, and they can come back together as zombies and completely destroy Korea together. The end! Wait, I don't know if that last part was true. Or was it? <laughs> I don't like zombies. Now even though the story did have a lot of holes in it, that doesn't change the fact that this is still a totally awesome song. Great song, great filming, great acting, but really bad story writing. This music video doesn't have a lot of dancing in it, but the live dance version of this is super fun. Just like Roly Poly, this makes for an awesome club song. This dance is also awesome for the dance floor. Just remember, you shuffle, you freeze, and then you wash your hair in freezing cold water. Oh yeah. As for the English of the song, we give the say, two out of five. Now there's no English in the song apart from lovey dovey, which makes sense as an English phrase, but is pronounced so terribly in the song that it sounds more like lovey dovey dovey. It's super cute, but if it's the name of your song and the main chorus and he can't pronounce it, then we gotta dock your marks. But let's be honest, Tiara, even though you do make some rocking songs, you have been on the forefront of some of the worst English in music as well. So sorry fellow Tiara Tards, but we gotta give him a two out of five. We asked you who did the better, Maggie. G Dragon and Breathe or J Park and Star? And the winner was undoubtedly G Dragon. He like crushed J Park. But a lot of people complained that they didn't like J Park's Maggie as well. So 
No more Mike Yoji Park. Stick to the B-Boy, man. For this week's Tiara vs. Tiara edition, we ask you which really long Tiara video you preferred. Tiara's Cry Cry or Tiara's Lubby Dubby? Leave your votes in the comments or on our Facebook poll and we'll announce the winners next week. Also, thanks everybody who requested Tiara for this week's K-Pop Music Monday. There's a video you want to see us do for next Music Monday. Head on over to eatyourkimchi.com slash kpop charts and get voting. Also, don't forget to like and favorite this video and to subscribe for more Music Mondays. Take it away, Spudgy.